Brad, Mr. Ash, the producer, engineer, owner, operator. Well, we'll strike the owner business right now. <laughs> and in any event, he is uh, tells us we're on the air, Mrs. Busby. He, he be the man. He's the right man. He Viewpoint, your program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. We've got two out of the three here. We've got uh, personalities and perspectives regarding our health. We're glad to have these folks with us this morning. We're going to make a formal introduction. And we appreciate very much you're not being part of politics. I just kind of sometimes get to thinking. Yeah, hey. we're pretty jaded with that right now. I don't. Know. Yeah, we've become cynics. I, how about you? Are you cynics as well? You yes. are. You yes. guess what? This is radio. You have to say words. <laughs> Shake the nodding your of head. head the microphone do it. is a remarkable technical advantage, <laughs> but it doesn't pick up motion. It picks up sound waves, not motion waves. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, before we start, uh, Todd might remember that, uh, well, let's try to start Kudo with the, uh, the viewpoint with a Kudo or two. Uh, our own neighbor here, uh, Norm Newhouse, uh, received a little recognition here uh, recently. So, uh, uh, the Courier uh, Man of the Year. So, let's tip our hat to Norm here. Uh, great job. Norm is, seriously, Norm is really involved with two things. The... Uh, the uh, Habitat for Humanity and the Food Pantry, and he's deeply involved in those, and we appreciate his uh, his services. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of recognitions, um, if you recall, we had a couple of gentlemen who uh, been on the honor flight uh, with us here uh, last week, and uh, uh, go and behold, uh, WLCN uh, station management uh, has seen fit to make a nice contribution. To the land of Lincoln Honor Flight, we thank you, Mr. Ash, very much, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, very nice and uh, much appreciated. That check was forwarded down to Springfield last week, and uh, Ray Riedel uh, expresses uh, Ray is the uh, guy who keeps things going for the Central Illinois Honor Flight. We really expressed appreciation for that, and we thank you very much. And uh, I'm supposed to make a public service announcement too here, uh, folks. We could not; our schedule was so tight that we could not schedule them on as guests. But uh, at Castle Manor, they're going to have a holiday open house featuring the Don Smith Orchestra on November the 28th, 2 to 4 p.m. The public is invited, and it would be nice to go out there. If you haven't seen Castle Manor, it's a lovely, uh, it's a lovely place, and we certainly know the management and how well it's operated and run. So uh, um, mark your calendars, uh, November the 28th, uh, 2 to 4 uh, Castle Manor's having the holiday open house, so uh, I promised Mr. Searby we would get that on since we couldn't get to Mama's guest. So make that a point, folks. Why don't you make a professional introduction of our guest? I, or did you have something else you wanted to do in advance? No, I'm kind of the strong, silent type. I'll just go ahead and introduce <laughs> these nice people. Dr. Todd Morning is... Uh, I'm pleased to say that, you know, yes, really. Yes, very much so. Thank you. And... Uh, I think I have congratulated you on that. If not, I would like to take that opportunity. I, I believe we went through that last time I was here. That's yes. good. That's good. Well, that uh, was yesterday. We can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. Um, Todd is the head of the rehab department, which I, I think has been taken advantage of by most of Logan County. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know certainly goes there. In fact, they go there now, and I appreciate, as I was telling you earlier, when they stop in and say hello to me when they leave there. And uh, with him is Jody Leonard, and she works uh, a lot with people who've had joint replacement, and that is becoming really in vogue, I think. It, about everybody I know has new parts. We're kind of like a car anymore, you know. They give us a new bumper, a new fender, send us on our way, right? Yeah, it's, it's much more common, I think, than it used to be, and people, I think, are wanting to stay more active as they get older, and so people aren't just resorting to the recliner anymore. They're wanting to get their joints back in shape so they can continue to do what they want to do, so it's uh, something that, that people are really looking into doing. Nobody... Uh, looks forward to uh, having any surgeries, of course. But everybody I know that has has taken advantage of that after the first few weeks is very glad they did. Mm -hmm. It gives them so much more mobility and so much less 
pain, and it's a wonderful thing. Katie Green is with them, and uh, Katie is a student, and she's observing and doing everything Lincoln and Logan County, et cetera, et cetera, has to offer. Did I understand that you were a student at Lincoln High School? I was at Lincoln High School. Okay, because Steve Sauer was so happy to see her. And I thought, well, he knows her from someplace. <laughs> I figured well, that I might just be mentioned it. that to Steve outside. Doesn't it just thrill you to, to, to see all of your young kids here? Steve's been retired a few years now from Lincoln College, or Lincoln High School. And uh, I just kind of pegged him a little bit about his age factor. Oh. <laughs> seeing all these young kids come to see him. Being professionals. Yes. Yeah. Nice to have Miss Green with us, too, this morning. Uh, Let's kind of kick off with this joint replacement business. Um, how many joint replacement patients do you suppose you see in the course of a week? In the course of a week, we have um, two physicians um, right now that primarily do uh, joint replacements at um, Abraham Lincoln. So um, they will do anywhere from one to three surgeries a week. And they don't do them every single week. But, but lately, we've been having pretty successful time of um, getting our patients to have their surgeries here in Lincoln. Um, I think that's important for the patients to know that that is a service that can be done here, that they don't have to go to Springfield for that. And then you personally begin your training of the patient uh, shortly thereafter while they're still an inpatient. Yeah, and actually we start actually before they ever come for surgery. We have um, a program, we have a um, what we call a preoperative um, session with our patients be, that they can come to before they ever have their surgery and we talk to them about what to expect during the surgery and after the surgery what their kind of their day will be like while they're in the hospital with us and what their opportunities are after they get out of the hospital to continue with their with their rehab and then yes we I think the thing that surprises people now is that we actually get involved with our total joint patients the morning after they have surgery. That's when we start their therapy. Oh, it's just amazing. You know, people used to languish in a hospital for <clears throat> days and days and days for everything, and they wouldn't even, in, I remember my mother telling about they wouldn't even let them dangle their feet over the bed for right. 10 days. Right. Well, you'd have yourselves pretty much a cripple by the time yeah, you Yeah, we, we've found over the years, and even in the course of time that I've been a, a practicing physical therapist, things have really changed and found that there's lots of complications that can happen if you let a patient just lay in bed after they've had surgery, getting blood clots, getting pneumonia, things like that. So it's very important that, that we get our patients moving and get those joints working quickly and get those muscles back back in shape. But it, it is difficult. They you know, I think patients need to understand that, you know, it's an elective surgery. It's not something that, you know, has to be done to mm -hmm. you know, for it's not a life saving type of surgery. It's an elective surgery and it takes um, a lot of um, effort on the part of the patient um, because they have to do we can tell them what to do what we what what is important for them to do but they have to put in the work and they have to be willing to do the exercises and and keep themselves mobile and and all of that after mm -hmm. their surgery the operative word is willing yes have to be willing yes yeah. now we also uh, see patients here who have had surgery in other uh, hospitals, is that correct? And, the, and then the doctors are the, would recommend a, a therapy a course of action, and we see them here. We don't, we don't, we don't see just patients that we operate on here at Abraham Lincoln. No, the patients that are operated in, at Abraham Lincoln, we see them while they're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have a huge outpatient um, population of patients that come in, and um, yes, they can have. You know, they may have had their surgery anywhere, and we've even had patients that have had their surgeries in other states yes. that then come here um, uh, for their therapy because they're because they live locally, and uh, and then we service them um, for you know however long it takes for them to to find a full recovery. I was amazed. Uh, I had a dear, we had a dear friend who had both hips done at the same time. <coughs> I thought that was pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. Now I like to ask a question about the uh, the uh, therapy process uh, in a situation like where you have two joints that really well, got to work with them. Uh, how does that work? Well, that's interesting. I, I personally, I have never seen a patient that's had both hips, but I've seen many patients that have had both knees replaced at mm -hmm. the same time. Um, and I tell patients that you know that is a a decision that a, the doctor has to make whether they feel that that patient is physically able to handle that type of a surgery or under anesthesia a lot longer. Um, but a lot of times those patients actually do very well 
because they really have to get moving. They don't have a choice. Um, you know, when they have both joints done at the same time, they don't really have one that doesn't hurt. So sometimes they do fine because they don't really know how bad it hurts because they both hurt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of get up and get moving. And, and those patients are usually, you know, either a little bit younger or a little bit healthier, a little bit more active prior to surgery. So they usually have the muscle strength and, and the ability to get up and get moving after surgery. And they do, they do just fine. And so well, your behavior mm -hmm. and lifestyle then before you actually go in for surgery is quite a factor is that right absolutely the the better shape that you're in um you know health wise and as far as your um, activity level before you come for a total joint replacement is very important the more sedentary a person is before um, they have a joint replacement the longer their recovery is probably going to be what's the average time of recovery across the board um, I usually tell my patients, um, and you'll hear this from the physicians too, um, really after the first six weeks, they really feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. They're back to feeling like they can do a lot of the things they need to do. After six months, they're doing really well. But, but most people will tell you it takes a full year to really fully, fully recover from a surgery like that. It's a, it's a very, very big surgery. And what's the average length of time spent by a patient in rehab? Um, they are usually in the hospital anywhere from three to five days and um, their length of, of rehab after that as far as going um, doing outpatient really varies. It's very individual to the person. There's some people like you said if they're in a lot better physical condition um, their recovery will be a lot less as far as when they need us to still be seeing them mm -hmm. for instruction and, and uh, moving them on and people and other people you know they may come and see us for three or four months. And then two uh, do you give them some instructions when they go home and say that every day you should do this or that? Absolutely. Or what have you? We give them um, a home exercise program even as soon as they leave the hospital that, that they need to do at least two to three times a day. And that's, that's what I was saying is important about their willingness to, to be proactive and be a part of their recovery is that if they don't do those exercises on their own, their recovery is going to be a lot much longer less. and more painful. Yes. I'd like to ask a question regards age spectrum. Let's go from the Todd and, and um, from the youngest you've seen in in therapy to what would be the the top end of the spectrum. The age how, how in how terms old? of a joint, joint replacement? replacement? Yes. Yeah, the, uh -huh. the youngest I have seen is 39, uh, and it was not in Lincoln. It was uh, back in Alton, uh, mm -hmm. but she had had some repetitive trauma to her knee, mm -hmm. uh, and there was just no other option at that point. The youngest mm -hmm. I've seen in Lincoln uh, due to an arthritic condition has been 49. Now what the doctors uh, are telling the patients who are 49, 50, 51, 52, they're, they're really trying to buy them a couple more years. Mm -hmm. um, they get to be 53, 54, they're a little more willing to do the surgery, 55, 60, you know, it's a little bit better. They want to prolong it as long as they can so they'll get more life out of that mm -hmm. joint. What happens if a person does have it when they're 49, 50 or so, and uh, then it goes bad on them in another 30 years? They, they were looking at a revision at that point where they have to go in, take it out, reshape the bone, put in new components, sew them back up, and off you go. But they want to, that's why they try and prolong it. They don't want to have to do that. Have yet. to do that, right. And what the newer the products are lasting a lot longer. Uh -huh. That's what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, ha what have you seen in terms of advancement technologically? In lots these? and lots of advancement in, in, the, in what they make the components of, mm -hmm. in um, the surgical techniques, that they, how they perform the surgeries. Um, just over the last you know, 15 or 20 years have really, really advanced. And so even some of the components that they're putting in patients now, they don't even know how long they're going to last. Um, they used to tell patients, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you're only going to get maybe 10, 15 years out of this yes. joint. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying 20 at a minimum. I've had a couple of patients that have been more like 22, 25 mm -hmm. that have come in for revisions. Um, but, but some of the components they're putting in today, they're not even sure that they might not last 30 years. What's so. the oldest you've seen uh, in a, he a knee or a hip replacement? Well, I would say that you are well within the age to have one, <laughs> if you're looking for one. Well, there's the good news, Bill. Don't be looking at me with those co uh, covetous eyes. Uh, the oldest I've seen has been 96 or 98. Really? Yeah. 92 was the yeah. one I had. 
Oh, gracious. I mean, and it's how it goes back to the individual. You know, there have yes. some very young 96-year-olds uh -huh. and some very old 67-year-olds. That's, so that's just, right. Just that depends is true. on the individual. That is true. Uh, I want to make a, a point that you brought up earlier with... Uh, um, you talked about do we do therapy after surgery from different places. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a, a swing bed program, which if you have your surgery in Springfield, Peoria, Bloomington, wherever, and you can't go home yet, maybe you live by yourself, you're not able to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. but you don't want to go to a nursing home for therapy, our swing bed program will take you in uh, a few days after you've had surgery someplace else, and we'll do your rehab for mm -hmm. seven to ten days at ALMH, and then prepare you for going home mm -hmm. on your own at that point. So Yeah, you raised a very important uh, point because uh, uh, these age groups, a lot of us unfortunately are uh, single positions, and doing that type of therapy sometimes is difficult for them to do uh, alone at home. Do you have uh, uh, folks who visit people in their homes to assist them in therapy? Is that a part of the program? Yes, sir. Uh, Memorial and Logan County both have um, home health um, therapists mm -hmm. that go around um, to the individual's homes to do their therapy. And I w would say that probably 80% of our patients take advantage of that for at least a couple weeks after their hospital stay mm -hmm. of getting some home therapy um, before they move into the outpatient therapy. But is it generally true <clears throat> that if you're taking advantage of the therapy in your home, you can't uh, go shopping in the morning and then at noon right. they come and call on you and then you have bridge club in the afternoon. Right. They require you to be what they consider homebound. Uh -huh. um, and I think the last I heard was the only things you could do is um, go to your doctor's appointments, your hair appointment, and church. Hair appointment. <laughs> <laughs> it's very oh, important yeah, that for the women that have oh, their joints gracious. replaced that their hair looks nice. <laughs> well, yes. It, women <laughs> like beautification. Right. I recall yes. my dear mother had to get out from the nursing home for her air appointment That's and it right. could be the worst kind of weather and I was scared to death I was going to drop her and, and let her fall and get something else broken uh, but that hair appointment was mm -hmm. supreme importance. Let's go to the swimming uh, 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 rehab area, Todd. Uh, that's a new thing that we have here in our lovely new uh, facility. Um, let's, let's address that just a minute and, and see the uh, how that's used and, and and how that enables you folks to do a better job. Well, we we were very fortunate when we built the new building to be able to have a um, a warm water therapy pool. It's, the official name is the Elizabeth Peacock uh, yes. therapy pool, um, yeah. and we appreciate their generosity oh, in my, yes. allowing us to have this. Um, we we use this pool from Monday morning through Friday afternoon. Uh, we have aquatic therapy where a, the doctor gives you an order, we do an evaluation for physical therapy. We determine that you need to be in the pool based on the condition you have. We put you in there with a therapist. They work you for 45 minutes to an hour uh, in a structured exercise therapy program. Um, and then, you know, you go on with your, your day. We have an aqua fit program. We have an instructor. Um, who comes in and teaches kind of like a water exercise mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. Aerobics in the water. Aerobics in the water, yes. Mm -hmm. um, our, our pool is limited in size, so we, we are limited to about six people in each class. Uh, but the ladies who are in there just have a ball. But, but is that a, does that have to have a therapeutic component, though? No, that is, that is a cash basis. Is that right? Yeah. And anybody can sign up for that if there are openings in the, in the classes, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Aqua Bridge program. Uh, let's say, Bill, you came in and you had therapy in the pool. You've got mm -hmm. your exercises now. We've discharged you from therapy, but you mm -hmm. like the pool, and it helps you, and you want to keep doing it. There's no option in Lincoln at this point to do that. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've uh, opened up our pool on a cash basis for those who have had therapy in the pool and know their exercises to come in and continue their home exercise program. On their own, and they pay for that as, as they go. Right. That's a, that's a $40 a month membership to our pool. That's cheap. It, it, it's it's very comparable to other fitness type facilities, and then we have an instructor there uh, to help them with any equipment that they might need. But basically, they're on their own. They're on their own to exercise, and it it's a it's a good environment. They socialize, they exercise, they play music. So it's just a really fun environment for people to be able to continue to do their exercises in that in that pool environment. But the qualifier there is, Todd, as I understand this, then you have to have had previous. 
uh, therapy in that pool. Correct. In other words, I couldn't just come out there and join up just because I'd like to go out there and do that. We would escort you out. <laughs> well, that wouldn't take Probably wouldn't much. be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> of which place? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you do. You do have to have uh, have had therapy in the pool and mm -hmm. and have your exercise structured exercise program, and then you can continue on your own. Do you have any need for old lifeguards out there at that pool? Uh, we can train you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, I was trained a long time ago. Trained I had my water time. safety instructors ready <laughs> by none other than Herb Alexander, who really put me through the paces. We'll, we'll get you recertified and stick you in there. <laughs> so do you think he's educable or trainable? <laughs> <laughs> do you don't have, do to, answer? I have to answer we'll, that? We'll go to the station break <laughs> while, while you're thinking yeah. about that answer. Whenever Mr. Ash is ready, we can take a station break, and then Todd can think about that answer. Is educable or trainable? <laughs>